Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela Ann, the friend of all the good YA book recs and literary lifestyle tips. And today's video is a highly recommended one. It is a 2021 bookshelf tour. If you didn't know, I have recently moved across the country from Ohio to Texas and it's been a wild move. And one of the things that didn't come with me were all of my books. I only took some of my books with me. However, there's still a lot of books here, which is pretty awesome. I thought it could be cool to go through my three different areas in my room where I keep my books and how I decided which books to bring with me and which books to keep at home. Although I don't know if I'll like remember all the books that I kept at home right now off the top of my head. I have three different areas in my room where I keep books. So we have the bookshelf behind me, which is where a lot of my fiction books are including some Halloween decorations. And then I have a little book cart that is currently full with nonfiction books. And then I have some of my favorite classic books and female authors who inspire me above my desk. Let's get into this video by starting with the bookshelf of fiction books. So a quick preface, my books are actually in alphabetical order over here. So we're starting with the A's and working our way through the alphabet. And I also have fairy lights on as decoration and a few cute little Halloween decorations as well as some bookmarks that are just kind of chaotically placed. You will see them during the tour and I really need to find a better place for them because they look kind of ugly on the bookshelf. The first book that we have here is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. I adore this book. If you want a cute YA contemporary, it's a great pick. Next, we have Daughter of Fortune by Isabella Allende. I have actually yet to read this book, but I love Isabella Allende. Next, we have a YA thriller, Take Me With You, and it's kind of a Black Mirror Z thriller. Highly recommend. These are two books I was sent they're a series, so the first book is Daughters of Neri, and then the second is Descendants of the First, and I was sent them to review, but I have yet to read them. As you will find out during this tour, I have a lot of unread books on my bookshelf. Next up, we have City of Saints and Thieves, another unread book. Two other unread books I was sent by the publisher. I think they're like romantic bridal books. And then next we have Under the Milky Way, which is another one I was sent by publishers and have yet to read. It's kind of a paranormal romance similar to the Obsidian series by Jennifer L. Armentrott, which I love. Next up is The Cruel Prince and the Wicked King. And I've read The Cruel Prince, I've yet to read The Wicked King. And then we have Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom, my love. Huge Lee Bardugo fan, even though those are actually the only two Lee Bardugo books that I own, which is kind of odd. Next up, we have The Darkest Mind series, including the novella little set. And this series is a YA dystopian. It's actually one of my favorite YA dystopians, so I highly recommend reading it. We have our little skeleton doing pigeon pose. It's from yoga. And then next, we have another of my favorite YA dystopian series, The Selection series by Kira Cass. Absolutely adore these books. It's like The Bachelor in a dystopian America with monarchs. And now moving on to the second shelf. First, we have To Kill a Kingdom, which is one of my favorite fantasy standalones. It's a YA fantasy standalone with enemies to lovers. Next, we have some books I was sent by Book of the Month, but I have yet to read them. So The Hunting Wives, This Time Next Year, This Close to OK, the last thing you told me. I think they're all adult books, but I have yet to read them. Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe, which I also have yet to read, but I'm planning on reading it this Christmas time because it seems like a Christmassy book. Uh, another book by from Book of the Month that I haven't read called The Dating Plan. I think this is an adult romance. Infinite Country, which is an adult book about immigration in the United States. These Violent Delights, which is a YA enemies to lovers fantasy set in 1920s Shanghai. Highly recommend this book. Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodin, which is an alternative history about someone who's trying to kill Hitler. Love this book as well. Then we have the Bridget Jones books. I love the Bridget Jones books and the movies. They're an adult rom-com series. Highly recommend both the books and the movies. After Bridget Jones, we have Liberté, which is a adult historical fiction I have yet to read. Um, then we have the To All the Boys I Loved Before series. This is a YA rom-com series, also a Netflix show. Absolutely adored these books. These were probably some of my favorite books from when I was younger. People We Met on Vacation, which is a really popular book, especially on Book Talk, but I have yet to read it. And Another book I have yet to read, a historical fiction book I have yet to read, a thriller I have yet to read, a thriller I have yet to read, and a thriller I have yet to read. This is almost a tour of my TBR pile as well. And then over here we have our little pumpkin guy who's gonna get out of the way so we can see the books, but also isn't he so cute? Anyways, now onto the books. We have the Truly Devious box set. I have read the Truly Devious. I have yet to read the rest of the books in the series, but clearly I wanna read them since I bought the entire box set. And then You Should See Me in a Crown, which is a YA contemporary rom-com. I absolutely adore this book. Defy the Night, which is a YA fantasy book that's coming out in this month in September. 
I have yet to read it, but I'm really looking forward to reading it. It's on my September TBR. More books that I was sent by publishers that I have yet to read. And then we have The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue and The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy, which is a super awesome YA historical fiction series of LGBTQA representation. And I absolutely adore both of these books. The third one I think is coming out in November. As you can see, there's like an awkward amount of space in between these books. But that space is there for the inevitable expansion of my book collection as my book buying habits are pretty crazy and I will most likely be buying new books very soon. The next one, this is an adult thriller called People Like Her. I have yet to read it. And then Tweet Cute, which is a young adult romance involving Twitter and it's adorable. It's like You've Got Mail, but set in the modern day times. And then of course we have the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Moss. I actually don't own Throne of Glass, which is kind of like a weird thing. I gave Throne of Glass to someone to read and they never gave it back. And I also don't think they ever read the book. So that's the reason why I don't have it. And I'm just like too afraid to ask this person for it back. So we just don't have Throne of Glass. On the end, right next to the Throne of Glass series is Crescent City book one. And I have, well, House of Earth and Blood, I think is the series name. And then Crescent City is the name in the first book. I have yet to read this book, but I'm really looking forward to reading it. It almost seems like it's a good like November book to me, if that makes sense. Does anyone else just like irrationally assign seasons to books or is that just kind of like a me thing? <laughs> and then down here we have these ugly bookmarks I told you about that I just really need to find a place because like I said, like it just doesn't look cute with them right there. We'll remove them for now. I just really need to find like a little container or something for them. Of course, we have the Akatar series. My loves, I adore this series. It's a new adult romance series. Also like new adult fantasy romance series. I Let You Go, I think it's a thriller. I haven't read it yet. Arsenic and Adobo, which I think is also a, a adult thriller, but I haven't read it yet. Next, we have Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen M. McManus. I love Karen M. McManus and I adore this book. This is actually a really great young adult thriller for fall time. Sky Falling, which is an adult book. One Last Stop, which is a new adult book by Casey McQuinston. I am currently reading this one for my September Patreon book club. The link to my Patreon book club is always down below in case you want to join. We read young adult books together and talk about them over Zoom, which is just such a fun time. Next to it, we have Red, White, and Royal Blue, also by Casey McQuinston. This is another new adult book about the first son of the United States and the Prince of England falling in love. Very cutesy. Then we have The Maidens by Alex McCleedes. I've heard this is a really great, like, thriller with dark academia vibes and I adore this cover but I have yet to read it. It seems like it would be a good October book. Then we have Don't Hate the Player by Alexis Ned which is a really cute YA contemporary involving video games. Highly recommend this for any fans of video games. Next we have All the Bright Places by Jennifer Niven which is a really great young adult contemporary. It's also a movie and I just adore that book. Next we're venturing into my acquiring collection of Taylor Jenkins Reid novels. I intend to buy every novel she's written, but so far all I have is Malibu Rising, which I read in June and I adore it. It's a great adult historical fiction set in the 1980s. And then I really wanna read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I mean, this cover's just gorgeous. I love that dress. It's a, another adult book about a, almost like an Elizabeth Taylor-like figure who's married tons of guys in like 1950s, 1960s Hollywood. Then we have The Boyfriend Project, which is a really cute adult romance and also takes place in the city that I live in. So that's super fun. Finally, we have Honey Girl, which is another adult romance and I really wanna read it, but I just haven't gotten around to it. For decor, we have this cute little tin that I got in Argentina it held some alfajores, which is an Argentinian dessert. I really don't know how to describe alfajores other than like you just have to try them and also just go to Argentina because Argentina is like one of the prettiest countries I have ever visited and I like a piece of my heart was left in Argentina. <laughs> And finally, we have our last bookshelf. So we have Can't Take That Away by Steven Salvatore. Then we have Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sanberry. I just interviewed the author of this book on my Instagram. So definitely go and check out that interview. But this is a really awesome sci-fi fantasy like story. So it's like sci-fi, but it involves witches and it's fantastic and really glares against these fairy lights. After that, we have Ariadne, which is a historical fiction set in ancient Greece. You Don't Live Here by Robin Schneider, which is a super fantastic book. Robin Schneider is one of my favorite young adult contemporary authors. If you like young adult contemporary books, you have to read this. Also, fun flex here, but Robin Schneider actually follows me on TikTok. I follow her too, but she commented on one of my videos where I recommended this book and was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much for recommending my book. And it was like a total fangirl moment because I've enjoyed her writing since I was like 15. So that was just like 
it was a really cool moment. Next, we have a book talk favorite, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, which I absolutely adore. It's a new adult book with time travel. And next to it, we have maybe possibly my all time favorite contemporary. It's kind of contemporary, kind of speculative, and it's They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. I recommend this book to everyone, and I am obsessed with this book. Next is Half Sick of Shadows, which I actually have yet to read, but it's a historical fiction that takes place in like King Arthur, England. Then we have Skype and the Toll, which this might be my favorite science fiction series of all time. I think it's just so unique and I love Neil Shusterman as an author. He's just so amazing. These books, I don't have the entire series. I think I have the first and third book. And I understand that that's like completely chaotic and probably like a book sin. Next, we have The Way I Used to Be by Amber Smith. This is a really moving young adult contemporary involving sexual violence and the harms of sexual violence on individuals. Highly recommend. It's a super powerful read. Windfall, which I started reading and never finished, but I think I want to try to finish it. It's like a young adult contemporary. Our Chemical Hearts, another young adult contemporary. What Are Friends For? Another young adult contemporary by my lovely friend, Sarah Sutton. I adore Sarah Sutton. She's amazing. This Mortar Coil, which is a young adult sci-fi. It's really great. That Weekend by Kara Thomas. I also have an author interview of Kara Thomas up on my Instagram. So definitely go and check that out if you're interested. This is a young adult thriller novel. I have yet to read it, but I'm going to be reading it soon. Imposter Syndrome by Kathy Wang, which I think is like an adult thriller. It takes place in like Silicon Valley. A lot of these books sound so fun. I just like haven't had time to read recently, which is so sad because I want to read all the books. Next, we have The Art of Being Normal, which is a young adult contemporary about a transgender main character. Every Single Lie by Rachel Vincent, which is a thriller novel, a young adult thriller, and I highly recommend. Instructions for Dancing, which is probably one of my favorite books that I've read in 2021 so far by Nicola Yoon. This book is absolutely fantastic. It's a quick and easy read. It's a young adult contemporary. It's not actually Instructions for Dancing, like it's actually just a rom-com and it just involves dancing. Highly recommend, plus like this cover is gorgeous. Speaking of beautiful covers, we have The Sun is Also a Star, also by Nicola Yoon. It's such a heart shattering and beautiful book. Next to it, we have How We Fall Apart by Katie Zhao, which is a super fun young adult thriller that's kind of has like gossip girl vibes. And then to finish off this fiction shelf, we have Pride by Ibi Zavoy, which is a Pride and Prejudice remix, and it involves like an all black cast. Now let's move over to the nonfiction cart. These are the nonfiction books on the book cart. As you can see, there's a lot of room to expand and also some boxes that I need to throw away. So here we have Girl Code, which is a book about female entrepreneurship that I have yet to read. She Means Business, which is another book about female entrepreneurship, which I read and I really liked it. It was like a good book. It was a lot about mindset versus like actual business stuff. This is a book that my workplace sent me. How to Be Everything by Emily. Wapnick. This is a really great book for people who are multi-passionate. So if you have a lot of like creative passions or just passions in general, highly recommend reading this book because it talks about how you can create a career with multiple passions instead of having to choose one. La Historia Argentina Contada por Mujeres. This is about females in Argentinian history. This particular edition is from the conquest to la anarchia, the anarchy, 1536 to 1820. It's a really fascinating read. You have to be able to read Spanish to read this. I'm not sure if there's an English version of this book. Next, we have one that I have yet to read, but I need to read, and it's On Writing by Stephen King. I've actually never read a Stephen King novel, but everyone talks so highly about this, and one of my favorite writing roles is from this. Next, we have a book that has a really interesting concept that I think might really change my life once I read it, but it's called The Four Hour Work Week by Timothy Ferris, Tim Ferris. I also have some nonfiction books that are not over there because I'm chaotic, but the one whose book jacket is here, it's the one I'm currently reading and it's Crushing It, How Great Entrepreneurs Build Their Business and Influence and How You Can Too by Gary Vee. It's all about digital marketing and content creation. So if you're into that, maybe check this out. And then these two books belong over there, but they just aren't. It's Daring Greatly by Brene Brown, which is my favorite nonfiction book of all time. I love Brene Brown. And then we have Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which I just finished. And this book is revolutionary. And now let's go over to all my favorite books by female authors. These are all classics, I will warn you. So first we have our collection of Jane Austen novels, along with this really cute Etsy print that I bought. It says Visit Pemberley, home of Derbyshire's most eligible bachelor. And then we have more of my favorite book by Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice. We have this copy of Pride and Prejudice, this copy of Pride and Prejudice, and then Orgullo y Prejuso, which is 
Pride and Prejudice in Spanish. And then we have The Completed Minor Works by Jane Austen. Next, we have another of my favorite female authors, probably my favorite female author from America, and that's Edith Wharton. So we have The Age of Innocence and then Roman Fever and other short stories. I have a giant collection of Edith Wharton stories at my house in Ohio, but it was just too big to bring with me because it's like all the novels she ever wrote in one binded book, if that makes sense. Then we have The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, although to be honest, living in Texas, I don't really need to read this book anymore because I basically live in a society that's exactly like this one. Next, we have my favorite book by Isabel Allende, which is The House of the Spirits. And then I also, when I was in Argentina, bought The House of the Spirits in the original Spanish, so La Casa de los Espíritus. This is a book with elements of fantasy that takes place in Chile right around the time of the Chilean revolution, which put Pinochet in power. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed my 2021 bookshelf tour. I would love to know what is your favorite book on your bookshelf at home. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more bookish videos in the future, please like and subscribe because I post reading vlogs, book recommendation videos, and videos like this all the time here on this channel. As always, I will see you down in the comments and in my next video.